Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Den. We are post S Factor 11, uh, and the whole squad is here, mostly intact. Um, how's everybody doing today? Good, good. Feeling them. Decent. I'm dying on bullet hells. <laughs> yep. You and your bullet hells. <laughs> all uh, day, every day. All, what do you mean, Smash or the bullet hell? I'm actually playing. That's like, basically what you do in Smash as well. Right? No, you deal with all of that. Actually, a bullet hell game. Yeah. These are all bullet hells. <laughs> Our favorite uh, genre. So for for those who who don't who may not have known this past weekend, there was a major in Mexico called S Factor 11, and it was uh, how many people was it? Anybody off the top of their head? Hundred something. It was a lot of people. It was huge. Oh, and we had. Least, yeah. yeah, we had three. Three of us were there. Uh, Shadow Cubides and uh, Zamba. So let's go through uh, y'all's experience. Uh, this was not. Any of your first times in Mexico, right? No, right. No. Okay. So how did this trip stack up to like the other times you've been or just like in general? Did you guys enjoy your weekend there? Anybody can start. Yes. We enjoyed right. everything. <laughs> we, got, we got one. Yes. I'll, I'll start, I'll start, I'll start. Um, so, yeah, it's my second time in Mexico. I had a pretty good time. I have like a Decent amount of like Mexican uh, friends who I've known for like years, like just off online and like just like me streaming, I guess, like when I used to stream a lot more. Uh, and seeing all of them is really fun. Uh, obviously, Mexican food is goaded. And so eating that was great. Uh, oh my God, I just remember the dessert that Mute and I and friends had. Oh my God, it was so good. Anyways. Um, <laughs> What was it? What was it? Yeah, you can't just it say that. Called, it was called a torta chaja, oh, which none oh, of us you knew. Too, yeah. None of us knew like what even that even was, torta but it was so chaja. good. Yeah, yeah, torta but, chaja. But like, was it know, um, it was... Uruguayan, uh, not like national dessert <laughs> or something like that? Yeah, <laughs> and I can say it right. <laughs> oh yeah, Uruguayan cake. Um, no, but yeah, it was so good. Uh, what else? Um, Mexico. It, it's just I just like. Being in that area, um, first of all, it's not like a million degrees over there, uh, so that's always nice. Um, and how? I don't know how it works. Um, it's like at the equator. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how it works. Uh, but yeah, so that's nice. And the event was really cool. Um, I guess I won't go into detail yet on like my run, I guess. Unless you want me to, but... Hey, we can do that uh, last, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what else, what else, what else? Um, but yeah, pretty much had like a good time overall. Uh, I, I really wish I, I, I bought like stuff from events more cause I, I want things, but I never like get myself to buy anything, but cause everything like looks cool, but I never buy anything. Not at dream hack. You were, you were fiending for one I piece cards, the dream hack. Oh wait, you're right. No, you're right. I guess. <laughs> How's your uh, risk doing? Uh, fine. Like almost perfect. So I'm going to chill for now until I feel like completely fine. But during the weekend, um, I think it was Friday, the second day of the pre-local. I was still like not really there good There was to two go. days of pre-local? Oh, one yeah. of the singles one was doubles. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I was like, what the? That yeah. was a crazy pre-local. Like uh, 400 pre people. Got to break it into pools and top 64. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Zamba, how did you know there was a, like, did you know there was a pot bonus for the pre-local? No, I wouldn't have done it anyway, though. Okay, but like, I feel like someone had to have known. <laughs> the, the Star GG page knew. No, Mexican players knew it was there. I I saw it. Was there a pop? How big was the pop bonus? Wasn't it was all crazy. It was all. Yeah. It was like it was like a lot of money. Like a so lot. Shiny Mark made mad money this week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like yeah. owns Guatemala now. <laughs> okay, two <laughs> K <Like 2K> for <laughs> doubles. Huh? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. It was very crazy. Um. Also, the the whole event being like free free to enter it was really crazy um no but yeah so uh the friday like my wrist is like kind of still getting there to be good so i didn't play really much any friendlies at all uh saturday um started playing again it was good enough for that day and then sunday pretty fine overall i think it was like after i played made it into top eight i was like okay i need to chill before it gets any worse than it had, was um and if it was tournament was pretty fine and then, like, at the end of the tournament, I was getting, like, really, really tired because <laughs> that tournament ended at one of the morning uh, both years. 
uh, at least the past yeah. few years. And uh, I was just like, okay. I mean, I, I ended up stop playing like eleven something. Uh, but either way, anyway, I, like, yeah, because I started. Like, we started at twelve in the morning, uh, yeah. or twelve, whatever. Um, yeah, twelve in the yeah. morning. By the way, uh, twelve in the morning. Uh, but I was just like, okay, I guess um, that's a really long day. Yeah, and I was kind of starting to feel sick, and that, that night I got like kind of more sick. I'm already, I'm fine now, but I was just like, mm, strange, but. So yeah, that's what you can exhaustion hits you in a way. Yeah, it just hits me sometimes. Um, so, me. I was going to say, how about you, Sal? I, I, I know you probably have uh, some fun stories about your trip to Mexico. Well, I'll start with the first because, you know, I'm not all doom and gloom. Um, I got to stay at Chag's again, which is what I did last year. And his mom makes phenomenal breakfast. I'll give it up. It was so good. <laughs> um, Mexican food all around is pretty good, I guess. And now let me talk about the negatives. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my god, yeah. For one, yeah, the tournament ended super late. I felt like the scheduling was pretty, like, it, it was not in our favors. Like, oh my god, I, last year it felt worse, so I'm kind of glad that this year it was a little better, but. As a competitor, that's like, you know, presuming I'm going to do good enough to where I'm going to... Like, I know, regardless, that tournaments are long. But it's kind of insane to me how you can start top 64 at 12 p.m. Like, that's just 64 people. I have locals with more people that will be done in, like, a couple hours. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't have to take 13 hours for the whole tournament to finish. Stream sure, priority. Like, stream priority. Stream every winner oh. set. But, like, I feel like if you're trying to do that, bro, if you're a big major, just do the extra effort of, like, having some quad stream. Like, you don't... Yeah. The mainstream and, was shut down for, like, the first 40 yeah. minutes. And I was the last round one on mainstream. So I had to wait two hours and 30 minutes just to fight Jazar. For oh, some reason, it started so late. For, yeah. for some reason. I was, like, I was like, what is happening? They, they called it like a 45 minute break or something. Yeah, I think I think it was just like down, so they were trying to fix it. Which like that's uh, not their fault, but uh, okay, well. that just affects everyone else because like you know that that was a huge big thing that they had. So that was really really annoying. And just yeah. personally, since I was the last one, I had to wait the longest. They did an ad break and a commentary swap right before my set too. Oh my <laughs> god, they do that every time I play on stream. I, oh my god, it's, it's true. So annoying. I hate that so much. Um, but. Yeah, there's just, I feel like because it takes so long, the venue, oh my God, there's just other problems too with the venue itself. On the first actual bracket day, um, there's multiple bathrooms you could use. Like I was low-key scamming it and going upstairs to use the bathroom uh, because only the in, the inside of the venue only had one bathroom. And like, there's a lot of people there. And especially when it's like, I'm on a time crunch of like, oh, I might have to play on oh, and being called for stream. And also it's like, I'm not controlling when my body has to go to the bathroom, you know? So sometimes you just got to go. There's one bathroom, so many people, it's gross, it's so crowded. The bathroom on the sec the upstairs bathroom on the second day, they closed it. The whole entire upstairs part was just closed, so everyone just had to be forced to the, um, you know, the, the bathroom in the first floor. And I was like, dude, like, this is so troll. Then, this is, <laughs> it was also like this last year. If you left the venue past a certain time, you are not allowed to come back in. So say if you were hungry and you wanted to get food that wasn't from the venue because they just sold, you know, like shitty vending food. Hot dogs, chicken tenders. Like if you if you leave and come back in, like they, they don't even tell you what time you're not allowed to come back in for. So like, for example, we went to a mall to get some food and then we planned to go back to the venue. So, you know, practice a little bit longer. Like the tournament is literally still playing. We go back there. And they're like, no, you can't come in. Like, even though there's people, obviously, like, every there's a shit ton of people there. You know, it's like, it's just annoying. Uh, that happened last time when we were watching the tournament, and it's like twelve thirty, and it's like, yeah, no, you if you leave, you leave. So it's like, it's just stupid. I, I, it was wow. getting me so tight. Even as a VIP, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm showing in the badge, and I'm like. Like, I don't know. Like, imagine like, you have to play in bracket and you, know like, you can like, come in. Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, I I left before, like, top four or whatever, because I was like, I, I'm not dealing with this. I'm going to sleep at Chags, you know? Like, mm. 
it, I wasn't a fan and I wasn't a fan last year. So I feel like there's just big scheduling issues, big um, venue issues that personally turns me off. And also, I'll give it up. Whoever was nicer. <laughs> Whoever was nice during that time. Cool. So that, that that's a dumber plus. Was it? I thought it was nice. I live in New it York right now. Texas. It, it wasn't as good. Here. It wasn't as good like as last year, but it was still. Did terrible. y'all not see the ocean right outside the venue? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> that's different. Uh, that, that's different. Yeah, it was the flooding was actually so bad. It was actually like. Insane. What do you mean the weather was good? There was an no, ocean no, flooding. Okay, but the temperature. Yeah. The temperature, man. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The the <laughs> the incredible humidity after it rains. No, it was literally like. It just flooded like right outside of the venue, and then like the cars are going through. Sonic and, Adventure like, One stuff, like yeah, and like whatever like sidewalk I'm on, it's just like 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 where's chaos? Like like literally where's chaos? Like the whole city's just uh, oh god. Um, uh, yeah, no, to like on what you're talking about, Sal. Like I yeah, I've also felt like the schedule is not good for me either, which is why I was just like okay, I don't even know like because even if like okay, I got sick this weekend. Even if I wasn't, it's just like dude, I'm not built to play from twelve to. Yeah. 12 30 a.m or whatever like that like that is just a lot and then multiple times like even like last year it was bad too because that same thing that happened to you ethan happened to me where they're like okay yeah your match is gonna be at like this time so like you know how like they told you to be there at, like this is the time top eight's gonna mm-hmm, start mm-hmm. and then they told you you were last after so and you ended up playing at like what almost eight right we sat there we just like basically yeah. do nothing um oh, that's what happened to you, me like, hey, you're gonna play at seven and then an hour later Six yeah. months. And I was just like completely sure that that was not happening. But either way, I was still there just in case, like, you know, who knows? But it's not even like something else took long. Like, he, like, Ultimate didn't start. We were like literally standing there. It was like, what are they just, just like watching Melee? Like, like I was like, playing Beastly and then I just stopped because I was just like, this is going to take too long. And then uh, that was like, like 30 minutes, like at least. And then I played him again to warm up and I still had so much time. I was just like, okay. Yeah, but you ran around him in that time. Like, you just... We didn't. Yeah, yeah. So, what's something since... You, like, there's been a lot of events lately that have had, like, scheduling issues and things of that nature. What's something besides, like, having a quad stream or having, like, dedicated recording setups uh, and things of that nature do you guys think would help make a Sunday or whatever day, last day of the tournament, better for... You guys as competitors who typically get very far in bracket, you know, like we could speak for like a top 32, top 16. It's like, okay, like usually a lot of people end a lot earlier than you guys do. So like as people who typically are going to be there for the long haul, what do you recommend TOs or tournaments do to like help with that? I I mean, Japan just runs it off stream and a lot of other tournaments just run a lot of loser sets off stream. And even winter sets, they'll just run off stream. Because you just, like, you started that sentence and you said, well, without the quad stream, without this, whatever like that, which is, like, two alternatives, it's like, okay, well, the only other answer is run off stream. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Do you Here's think it's worth it to go farther day one, like, make the pools harder? Because, like, I also think that's an option, right? Like, so whatever your first match after the round one pools would have been, it's like, okay, well, that you play, and then it's, like, top 32 on Sunday. So then even if they want to go that route, it's half of the matches. Mm-hmm. And then I it's mean, like you're still warming up to play the hard match anyway, instead of like, hey, you just woke up, top player. Mm-hmm. I, I was agree with that. I was gonna say and like, there's one thing. Oh, you can go. You can go. Okay. Uh, so like, if they're gonna make the day one like have more matches, and then the next day have like top thirty two or whatever, just make sure that it doesn't start at eleven in the morning or something like that, so we actually have time to warm up and be ready to play a good level player. Uh, you're not just like messing up everything um and then yeah like if it has to be off stream make it be off stream uh and don't make such biggest breaks of all time then yeah pretty much it. so here's an idea that i've low-key heard about and i think is implemented at some japanese tournaments Jap- japan tournaments they're the goats at like their scheduling they will have one day events with the same amount of entrance and it'll be done way faster than yeah. top 64 you know like basically everyone has a phone if you're going to a smash bros tournament and you don't have a phone your priorities are just not there or you're literally 10 years old if you have a phone you can go to smash gg and see when your pool what your pool is right what you can do as the like pool captain or whoever is running the smash gg 
you are able to like set that a match is called and like where it can be. So for example, if I'm playing, like when I was playing in Japan, I could see, oh, I was called at like station 250. I'll go to station 250 because, you know, I'm keeping on top of where I have to be and what I have to play. So I'll go there and then we'll play the set and then report it. We don't have to wait for a pool captain to call us. We don't have to wait for like, if you don't come by a certain time with the pool captain just yelling out loud, like looking for people, because, you know, some people like, that's just different. That's person to person stuff. If you're able to just like go on your phone and check what you can do, that makes it so much easier for everybody and efficient time-wise, because if they don't show up to the to their like setup in like 10 minutes, that's a DQ. Automatically you know, DQ. Checked. You know, you didn't have to wait for someone uh, to be like, oh, like, I didn't hear your voice. You didn't, like, you could have checked your phone. You know? And I think that's, mm -hmm. like, genuinely really, like, that should be implemented. So, for yeah. sure. Like, yeah, that's that makes really, sense. Yeah. It's literally automated. Uh, like, it's just, it's just like how the restaurants are, though. You just click on the kiosk and you order your food and it just, a machine just like, hey, here you go. Mm -hmm. There could really be other efficient. issues that arise from that with, like, say, the <laughs> Wi-Fi in the venue being bad or just... Like Supernova? Oh, it's yeah, always bad there. Sucking, or the app, just like the browser. But <laughs> the app. I feel like... <laughs> I we feel wish. like <laughs> if, if all the dominoes are, like, in a... If it's all in a good way, like, I feel like that on average should be more, like, that should be better than just, like, hoping that people come to the correct pool. Because you still got to check on your phone which pool you're at, you know? Mm -hmm. So Very true. you can exit the venue, unless they don't let you back in. <laughs> you can exit the venue, <laughs> check where you have to play, and then go back in. You know, like... Making it... Le that's less work for everybody involved, honestly. Which saves time. And yep. as someone that values the time, and I'm sure everybody else values the time, like, we need that. They need to be, like... Uh, fucking annoying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I think it's definitely because I feel like Japan they're just I guess it's not just top players, it's everybody. Like they're reliant on everyone being competent enough to like make sure the event goes on a smooth pace, as you were saying. So I feel like top players in the states we could also just um uh like we be responsible for our pool and like not like run our own pool, but like at least help it go faster because like something has to give at some point because there's too many events this year that i could remember off the top of my head that's like very uh like poor schedule poor timing whatever it may be like they just want to stream too much i don't understand why the culture for north american tournaments is like we have to stream 85 percent of the bracket or else this is a fail tournament like it's not it's not that big of a deal well, it's because people that aren't there get mad when they don't like you remember what happened at I forget which tournament it was, whether it was collision or let's make moves Miami or something last year where WebJP beat light and everyone was just like, how dare you not stream this set? This tournament is a sham. And it's just like, OK, so like, yeah, but then CO, CO can just be like. I just continue. I mean, you're like wrong. <laughs> If the venue has good Wi-Fi, people can also stream it on their phones. They can also just be recording setups. There could just be budget streaming <laughs> setups where it's just a gameplay and like no like, commentary, you know, so like it doesn't take time to switch. Yeah, out. literal yeah. multiple quad streams, recording well, setups. Like I think recording setups is like a thing that's was more popular like back in, in the day. Days? Not not to be not to be an old man, but like <laughs> back in the brawl days, we had like so many tables that were just recording setups, and it's like we understood that that's where the footage is going to be. So we just, that's what it was. We had like a main stream and maybe a secondary stream and then like 12 recording setups. And it's yeah, like, again, like YouTube cool. King Ocean, one of the most legendary brawl sets was literally on a recording setup. Like it yeah. wasn't on the main stream because it was like 17th place or something. So like it didn't make it there. But instead of like, I feel like, you know, them putting it on stream would happen nowadays, right? They'd be like, oh my God, we have to do this. And then it would make the tournament last an extra yeah. hour that's yeah, so I think, funny to me because i feel like every time i see a legendary brawl set it's just like gameplay <laughs> like every time yeah i'm just like oh that makes sense because we weren't yeah, as much like games about it back then on yoshi's island yeah oh my goodness yeah
But I missed that stage. You had to be there. You you, you knew the audio if you were there. Great. <laughs> but like I don't know. I think quad streams, uh, recording setups, more top players just streaming things. You know, uh, or people in general just streaming things. Like anything to get footage out there to help tournaments run more efficiently. Like I don't know. Tos are just way too worried about. They're they're way too worried about things that don't matter in the long run. And it damages the tournaments significantly. And I, I don't understand why they're so willing to just let that be a thing. Because they make money from advertisers, but also it's not like the stream's not going to exist anyway. And it's also like, what what's going to pay more? Like streaming some random, nobody really cares top 64 set? Or the tournament going over, like, over to... Yeah, like having to pay extra venue fee. Yeah, what, what's worse, a $10,000 fine or... Like, let's be for real, guys. Yeah. I mean, true. I, like, I think people are just... I think, people, like like, like uh, Eric said, people are just scared of backlash and scared of letting people down. And, like, I think a lot of players in that top 64 bracket, it's like, oh this is like maybe their first time or like one of the few times that they make it that far. So they feel more entitled to have their set recorded or streamed because it's their first time and they want it to be like meaningful for them. And it's like, that's nice. Bring your own recording setup. If we're on the topic of bringing stuff, bring your own equipment to tournaments, you can record your own setups. Like you want to know the, the most extreme, like offense of this is just like, I feel like when I was backstage, I was sitting there and I was just like watching. I was getting really tired. But like, you know how Gact went up there and basically got like nine stocked by like Sonics or whatever. It was really bad. <laughs> he came off and I think he just said, I'm too tired. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it's I think obviously the, the the grand finalists are two people that are outliers in terms of keeping energy for a long time. Uh, they save energy. So. They don't do anything. Let's talk oh, about it now. Let's. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if you're timing, if you're, you're like, I, I feel like spoilers for whoever doesn't know. It's really grand finals. Grand finals was Sonics and Shiny Mark, two players who very much are in love with the concept of a clock. So, like, <laughs> whoever invented the clock, like, they are number one supporters. Uh, it's true. They just, I, I think they have such a a unique skill that they're playing the in-game and out-of-game game. Like, they are making you exhausted. They are making you angry. They are making you pissed <laughs> the off. The rest of the bracket going to take longer, so then yeah, <laughs> they win like, you fall asleep. Like, it's it's insane that, like, people, like, like those two players, and there's much many more players like that, but they have so much extra stamina because they're not wasting it on getting frustrated by them. By themselves? Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I've, I'm the one doing it, so I'm not mad. I'm chilling. Mm. That's why it was cool seeing them fight each other that I'm just like, ah, They're this is going to take a thousand years. Who's going to get angry first? Who's it's also the only... Hurt? It's so funny to me because, like, obviously, as Pika player, like, I don't like timing people out. I play against Sonic like that because you can't approach him. And then, obviously, Sonic doesn't have great actual approaching options so he can't just deal with tj super well um so it ends up just being a lot of nothing which to me is very funny like can't be pro player or not um but yeah that it i did not watch the grand finals yet because i that was I'm so excited to watch it so you just want to save it for when you really have mm-hmm. and I, i'm gonna no literally i'm gonna make a video that's literally that set and then shiny or sorry Sh- shattuck spargo which are going to be two very different vibes <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, one is one is exciting the entire time and the other one is, is exciting the last 10 seconds yes of the entire set <laughs> oh, I think so, the game. Uh, maybe like 15 <laughs> i don't remember when that parry happened there were like seven seconds left or something. I don't know. Uh, no, it's crazy. Yeah. So I guess now that we're talking more about the tournament itself and not criticizing TOs, how dare we? Um, let's talk about the three of you, uh, your individual runs. So let's start with uh, Mides. I was go first. Yeah, literally, yeah. Um, I went and I just uh, I think I just need to be more mean about like the whole thing. 
It's just because what the I kinda, whole thing. So like, what an event is like. Oh, okay, I'm paying your flight in your hotel, whatever like that. I was like, after Patrick, I was like, kind of feeling like kind of bad, but I was like, I think I'm okay because it was like it started before. And I was like, I think I'm getting better. I'll be fine. And then I went and I, I was not fine, and I was just sick. And I was like, well, this got worse. And then the like atmosphere in like Mexico and just like the hotels and all other stuff like that, it made my allergies so much worse. And then I just like couldn't breathe. Uh, my sinuses were so clogged. By the way, flying with its uh, clogged sinuses is not fun. On the way back, oh, it's it, the worst. It, it hurt. It actually hurt like a lot. I was like, yeah, really bad. I, I did that like last year. I thought like I thought I was having like an aneurysm. I was just like, yeah, my yeah. brain was getting hacked. I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That happened um, to me once of flying into Fort Lauderdale, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, <laughs> yeah, bad. very bad. Um, um, so yeah, I was just like really sick, and I just. Dude, I feel like I didn't. I don't even feel anyway because like I played, and I'm just like I hate that everyone makes all these like things. It's like I, I, it's kind of endearing, I guess. It's like everyone's like thinks very highly of me, and they're like, "Oh wow, like Steve and like like um, DK features even." I'm just like, why is it always Steve is broken and DK features even? Why is it not Munich is trash? Like, can we just like? <laughs> No, can you're way too good home? to be garbage. Like no, like Spargo. Spargo can be a fraud and be washed. You are special, kid. Like <laughs> I'm just like, there's no way I get sick and then this happens, and then everyone's just like talking about all this stuff like that. I mean, I guess like many be other people after that too. So it's like even worse of a problem, which is why people go mm-hmm. for Steve specifically. Yeah. Um, but so like, are you yeah. are you essentially saying that you should not have gone to the tournament? Yeah, no, I shouldn't have gone. Okay. Because I, like, the way, when I was playing, I physically could not, like, play. Like, I was, like, so, like, zoned out. I couldn't do anything. Um, And at that point, like, I literally should have just, like, DQ'd. Because I was, like, trying to beat Manny just because I was, like, okay, well, this is the last match of the day. So, hopefully, if it's, like, fine, maybe I'll feel better tomorrow. And I was trying to buy medicine over there. And, like, dude, their medicine isn't as strong. They don't, like, sell it to you like that, like. The, the NyQuil is, like, stronger than the Vicks they sell over there. And I was trying to, like, take, like, Dayquil or something like that, but I didn't bring any. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, no, I didn't feel good. And then, Ethan, you guys were on, like, the, the fourth floor or something like that? Uh, you know, you got, okay, you no, know how I, heard I was on the first floor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was literally, like, the loudest music ever, and it played until, like, 2 a.m. The restaurant was right under me, and they were just blasting music under me the entire time. And I was like, this is insane. I put my headphones in and everything with noise canceling. I could still hear it. I'm, I'm just like vibrating under me. I'm just like, this is ridiculous. And I couldn't breathe either. And then also my AC wasn't That's working rough. the first day. And I had to call them to like come fix my AC on the first day wow. too. It was just ridiculous. I was just like, this is stupid. And um, yeah, no, I honestly just like DQ. It's like fine because I, really, I don't really care about my rankings. But the whole like all these things that people start making up is just kind of stupid. Like on Twitter or whatever the fuck like that. Oops. Um that's how annoyed I am. Um yeah, and it's real talk, you know? Yeah. As in saying things like Peach DK's even. It's 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 really not. It's just whatever. Well, clearly. If I can't DK see DK wins. Screen, you win. <laughs> um <sighs> Yeah, and I think we got some people sick. So that sucks. I didn't think I was like yeah, contagious. The entire team sick. I because I took two COVID tests and it was like negative, negative. I was like, okay. I'm I'm not dead. Um yeah. Oh well. It happens. What can you do? Zomba. Yeah. Mr. Okay. Sal, how about you? What was your uh how was your run? Uh I did I didn't do too great. Uh I got like 17th or something. I don't know. Pools and everything. Every match I won, I pretty much dumpstered my opponent. And then I don't know. When I when I fought like actual hard players, it just felt I could just feel like I know I didn't want to be there. Like, I, I originally, before I was doing Smash Factor, I had a different tournament that I planned on doing. Um, <laughs> that the Buzz one. So I, I was looking a little jelly of him. But <laughs> the whole time I'm at the, I was at Smash Factor and playing in bracket and like actually practicing for bracket, to me, it just felt like low key a waste of time. You know what I mean? I, the vibes for me didn't feel ready. And it was like coming immediately from Patchwork to Smash Factor, which is like, I find I have done a lot of tournaments back to back to back and been fine because I knew I wanted to do it. You know what I mean? I knew I didn't really want to do Smash Factor. And coming in, 
how I like I came in on Friday in the afternoon and I was like, okay, like I guess I gotta play in a super major tomorrow now. It just didn't it it just didn't feel serious to me in the sense of like I don't know. I it wasn't it wasn't a good outing for me. I didn't want to play, but I still played because you know, kind of have to. You and there's not even and there's not even anything of like, oh, they invited me, so I feel obligated to go. Like they didn't give me free hotel. They're not paying for my flight. There's like other like there's other factors. So I didn't really care. You know, I was like, I kind of had to be there, so I did what I had to do. And it just felt like I couldn't play actually like myself, you know? And that just unfortunately culminated to doing pretty bad. Yeah, what happened? Why did you miss your first flight? (laughs) That's a crazy troll Um, question. (laughs) What do you call it? My girlfriend was staying over with me after patchwork. Enough said. Hanging out. And (laughs) what do you call it? When we were packing and stuff like that, I thought I packed my passport. I didn't pack my passport. And I got to the airport. I live pretty close to the airport, so usually that would be fine. But low key, I was cutting it really, really close for the flight because, like, normally it wouldn't matter because I have pre check. Newark Airport, low key, doesn't take that much long. But the second I got there, and then I got past security, or I got past like the first one before you actually give like everything, like, you got to go through. Oh, like check in? Yeah. I got past that, and then someone t- like said the word passport, and then in my head I was like, I don't have my passport. <laughs> immediately, <laughs> immediately, I start checking for flights for tomorrow because that was the last flight for that day that I was capable of doing. So I tried finding one, and I was able to find one for literally free, like because it, it was the same price or whatever. So there was no like downside for doing that. I just had to stay here longer, uh, which I mean. I didn't complain, but <laughs> yeah, I just left the passport in my room and completely forgot about the fact that Mexico is a different country that would require a passport until <laughs> some random TSA guy said the word passport happens. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I've done that before when I was going to Canada. <laughs> yeah, like Zombo, remember the time I, I saved your life at? Uh... Oh my god! <laughs> was it was so it was lovely. Nice. Yeah, I I had to beg that Uber driver to get me back and then take me back to the airport. I remember giving him all the cash I had, pretty much. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! So wait, what what was that story? Um, we were rooming together at Ludwig's and mm. it was like super late and he just left and I was like, okay. And then I was just chilling on the bed. I was like, la la la. And then I just got up and then I looked and I was like, well, my wallet is not black. And that is a black wallet sitting there. And there was only like one other person in this room. So I opened the wallet and I was like, I see. And I just texted him. I'm like, yo, I don't think you're going to be able to make it through that flight. <laughs> and then he's like, no, I'm like, gonna have my passport. We're fine. Like. It was like, I saw, I saw the little typing bubble for a little bit. It was like, oh my God, or something like that. <laughs> and, then just, <laughs> and then he started coming back and I had to go meet him at the door. And then I went to like where the Ubers pick you up. I handed it to him and then they just got back in the car. And he was already going like perfectly on time. You know what I mean? To do that, right. to make the trip come back and go back. And then he was like kind of yeah. messed up. <laughs> well, that was in Vegas, right? <laughs> yeah, it was. was Vegas. Yeah, well, thankfully from the trip to the airport, it's like, 10 minutes. Very, very close. So, yeah, but you don't understand. He was cutting it close. No, no, no. I get it. I get it. Of course. Like, we spoke about that last time. (laughs) We sometimes we have questionable flight practices. (laughs) Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm definitely on the gang of I look, you make it for boarding. Make it for boarding. Yeah, me, I, I always check a bag. So, my rule is you can, the ladies can check a bag is 45 minutes before departure. So, I get there at 50 minutes. And I have pre-check, so I'm just like, as long as I can check my bag in, I'm golden. Mm-hmm. Well, I think there's one elephant in the room. Someone that actually, you know. Someone who was actually at the tournament. <laughs> right. Someone, someone that was there. Yeah, Ethan, uh, <laughs> you were at S-Factor 11, so uh, why don't you tell us how your run went? You say so. I'm just kidding. That's um, crazy. <laughs> uh, so, Yeah. Sorry, pools. I think I might have dropped a rule. I think I no, I didn't drop a game. It was all and best then, of five, right? 
Uh, yeah, I was top of the five. Cool. Uh, and then I played law. Um, lost like one game barely, but it was still fine. I played like lost two Luigi, Luigis. Correct. Yeah, I played yeah. him and the different Luigi. The tag was Ocon, and I was like, okay. And then Sunday, um, played a Mo, uh, the Ninja, and it was game that five. Was so e- funny. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so my history with Ninja is like so scuffed because okay, I, just so everyone knows, I think it's a like minus one. Uh, as in Greninja wins. Yeah. Um okay. I can see. I it. played Tarek. I played Tarek. I got in 3 0'd. Um to be fair, I think I played okay. I think every time I play good Greninja, for whatever reason, I think I'm just playing so bad every time. <laughs> because I swear I will always know exactly what they're going to do, and then I'll barely misposition myself and I'll explode. Because I'm getting hit by one of the 10 million couple starters. Um <laughs> and then so like I played Tarek, like it was like top eight, like the first set. So I was like shook, I guess, whatever. Um, I played like Ice Knight. It was like day two of Gateway Legends original, uh, and <laughs> it was like in the morning, like my first set, and I got obliterated. And then I play Mo, and I lose game one, and I'm just like, not this again. And uh, Dude, the, so, the eye rolls were crazy. <laughs> they were I, I, the, years. Enti- <laughs> the entire weekend. Okay, when it comes to me and like when bad stuff happens to me, I'm just like. This is just so funny. Like, it's just so funny that's <laughs> happening. Like, it's just... Because I'll get mad for, like, one whole second. I'm just like, oh, whatever. And then I'm just like, okay, whatever. Get, move on. Like, please. Uh, so t- game two is like Kalos. And then he uh, trades with me, like, on my second stock. Um, he dies. I live, though. And I make a, a comeback, um, as I do. And then... Comeback was crazy. Yeah. And then game three, I'm, like, winning the entire time. Get edge guarded at, like, 50. I did kind of troll, but like it's kind of easy to troll, like in that sense. Uh, what else were those? Um, game four, I like. No, I, I like two talking. And then game five, uh, I am again winning. And then I, I get hydro pumped two times in a row. Um, one time I'm like facing the other direction, I don't know it. And so I just up be like the completely wrong way. And then I like barely, like kind of barely close out the game. I was like, Lol. Uh, I like when you laugh when you. Yeah. Like, I know it's not meant to be disrespectful, but it is very funny. Dude, that that laugh had me rolling. What did you say, Sal? I was getting so bad for you when I was watching that (laughs) set because he kept popping off every single game. He even did like a mid stock (laughs) pop off. And I'm like, if I if I I didn't know about that one. If that was me, I would be so toxic. I'm not gonna lie. Like, yeah, I, I'm sure. I was like, <laughs> he literally laughed at his face. Like, I would do. It's pretty toxic. <laughs> it's not the first time I've been laughed to my face. As someone's just, oh my god. Anyways, Dude, um, so funny. And then I play Lima, who obviously like is really, really hard, uh, tough draw for me. Um, I ended up winning three one though. I like played like a lot better that set. Like I was doing stuff that like I never done against him before. Like I. <laughs> He did forder off ledge. I parried it. The first one immediately after tilt explode. Uh, I literally never do that. And I feel like <laughs> when I play Lima, like Lima is such a demon for me. Like even to this day, like some part of me is still shook. Like it's just Bale as a character and like how he knows me so well. But like I get, even game three, like I just SD like my last talk. Um, and I was just like, okay, game four. <laughs> that and it's just always like i'll be uh, i'll be living because people will see me lift to 20 percent against bail and like just just, just die man like just like and i'm just like oh like you don't understand like why i'm trying to live so long because i get put at zero percent and i am <laughs> fighting for my life yeah it's um, like when, once you die at 240 it's like oh you're at 20 <laughs> equally as likely to die <laughs> um like lima's at like 110 and i'm just like oh my god like i'm the real one losing here me thinks um but yeah i, st- I still won uh, so I was really happy about that. And then I played Chad. And I'm, like, really good against Palu. Like, very, very good against Palu. Uh, and so he tried Min Min two games. And it just... It didn't work out for him. Uh, and so I went to set 3-0. And so I, basically after that, I, like... Then you waited three went hours. To, yeah, I went to go eat. As I was eating, I was like, I, like, really need to go lay down. So I went to the hotel, laid it down in the darkness. Even my dad gave me a whole massage because my body started, like, hurting. Like, I guess I'll kind of, kind of starting to feel the sickness. Uh, and then went back to the venue. Started let you back in? That's crazy. Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> started playing obesely. And then I was like, we, what's happening? I was looking at the stage because we're backstage. And I'm like, 
there's like nobody there. It's like six o'clock already. <laughs> I'm just like, hello. Um, I'm not sleeping anymore. Anyway. Uh, and then, yeah. So I stopped playing, and then I finally play Gact. And oh my god, me, Mew, and Beastly like prepared for that set so much. It's like, okay, so Gact's gonna do this and that, this and that. And so what you're gonna do is this and that, this and that. And I started playing the set. They were both so very right, and I knew they were right. And I was like, okay, so I'm gonna do this. And I kept messing everything up, slash, not going for anything. And I was just like, oh my god, classic me. And so I lose three one. Is that then, classic like, you? No, no, no. That's classic me. Like, no. Oh, is it like old you school know. you? No, like, like I'm so the type to just overthink things, I guess. And like, if if I do not play my game plan um, properly. I was just getting, like super mad at myself and like it just doesn't go good. And so I was like a loss, whatever. I know what I did wrong. I know what you did right. So I, I I'll be over like, it. I feel like that set made me think I should have left you alone. I was like, I kind of thought that afterwards too, like low key, because just like there was just so much overload. I think there was overload of information. Like, maybe. yeah. But I, every I mean, time I, you got hit by it, you were like, oh my God, like I know I should be doing But I was like, maybe your yeah. natural flow would have just been better. But then after the other been. set, I was like, well, we can give and take here. Yeah. <laughs> Cause um, okay, so then I played Spargo, and that was like the least prepared for any set I had that the entire weekend. And I was like, so that was just like raw me. Um and so like that set, I was like just like game two was happening. I was like, okay, he's doing this and that and this and that. And so I'm gonna adapt right now. Uh so the game two is a clean game. Uh he let me go Kalos, which he doesn't usually do that. Um I was like, whatever. Uh, I know he likes Kalos because yeah. I remember I had to tell him a long time ago, like you should stop letting Pikachu players go here, <laughs> like stop doing that. You're letting me beat you for no reason. He was like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, game three happens. He like gets the better of me. And then game four, <laughs> oh game four, he was getting the better. <laughs> so of so I got oh. backered into Forder, and I was like, wait, that's like real. I was like, mm -hmm. I got hit by like the real combo, like because honestly, I remember I countered the fair like the last time it happened to me. Um, so that happened. I was like, "Oh, this is very bad." And then I forward smashed. Like I was not normal get up. I forward smashed the other way, and he. I think he jumped air dodge down, managed to get behind me, shielded, and then up smashed like behind me. And I was just like, "Oh my god, everything is going wrong." And then I take like fifty percent of my last stock, and I'm just like, and I'm just like laughing about everything. Like if you see like my camera, I'm just like, <laughs> uh, and then we lock in or whatever. Uh. I then we get this casually, pin. casually three stocks. Yeah, or I like it like a Spargo. pin, uh, do corn things, pin him again, do more corn things. He loses his jump, bait the air dodge, pin the up B. Like, it's so funny because I've done that so many times. <laughs> I've done it so many times to where it happened. I, I, but that there, happening there was like a different case, obviously, because it's Fargo. Uh, and the game five was really close. Um, and I, I clutched it out with like an F smash. Um, you be doing so that I'll, to these top I players. I was super happy about that. Yeah. I love that F smash. I was like, it's so good. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's literally the same as the Sonic's F smash. It's the mm -hmm. same thing. Um, but yeah, I was really I like being able to it. read the words that you said perfectly afterwards in your pop off. It's very obvious what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was just, I was actually just like, wow, I actually did that. Um, Cause like, Spark was just a, a player that like, I've always felt like I could beat him. And whenever I was playing him in bracket, I was just like, I am not like matching like the level of skill that I know I can and like to play against him. And so that was like the first time where I felt like I was actually like keeping up at some, at, at some point. And so I was like, okay, thankfully it took long enough. Um, and so I yeah, that, you over respected him, like which is why you get like uh, Yeah. <clears throat> and there were just be so many times where like some things would just catch me off guard like barely. And I'm just like, uh. Uh but yeah. So that's what happened. And then I played uh Sonics, who we once again like did prepare for a decent amount. Um I had to beat him at Luminosity, and this is the next time I played him. Uh, I went down the first two games, the second game, I definitely like choked. Uh and then I started reverse geoing him. Game five, he gets like, two, I think he's got like two good edge guards or something. Yeah. And I, I started reverse stalking him. And then I, it's like, it's like too late. It's like too late. 
uh, and I'm I'm just like, it's whatever. Like, he's probably gonna go farther than me, maybe because he probably has way more energy than me right now, uh, for a multitude of factors. Um, but uh, yeah, that was basically my run. Uh, Forts was a fair end to the season for me, so I'm happy about that. And yeah, Forts with a Spargo wins pretty good. Yeah, mm-hmm. and also the fact that you went like. I was, I was talking to Beast, like the fact you brought Sonics to that game five, like after that game two, most people losing that game two would have been like a death sentence for like, the yeah. rest of mm-hmm. that. and it would just been like edited a three Oh, but like, mm-hmm. that's what I'm talking about. I was just like, Oh my God. Like I, you got to stomp it out or you're going to come back. Because- <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. For so sure. that, that's very cool. I'm, I'm really happy that you beat, uh, you beat Spargo back. Uh, I was sad to see you lose to Sonics, but like you said, you know, it's it is what it is. Uh, you had plenty of wins on him this season as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I think this will be a, a first time thing for us in the den. We're going to introduce uh, the man who avenged you uh, for losing to Sonics and who ultimately won S Factor 11, uh, Shiny Mark. How you What's doing, up, man? Guys? Can you hear me? Yes, yeah. yes. yes. All right. Let's go. Um... All things considered, I'm doing well. I'm sick, unfortunately, so uh, definitely feeling a little under the weather. But um, obviously, I'm insanely happy. I still think to this moment, it's kind of crazy, like the first time you win a major to like believe it. Uh, but it happened, and I knew I was able to for a while, so I'm glad it finally happened. Long overdue. Uh, I know we have all believed in you for a while. Uh, it's good to finally see it happen. I know some people uh, in this call are really happy to see uh, Pikachu do well because a lot of people have been thinking Pikachu is not that great anymore. Um, so it's, it's, it's really refreshing to see you prove all those people wrong and just to like prove yourself correct. Because like you said, you've believed in yourself for the longest time. So many people have believed in you. Like It must have felt like, just the sigh, like the breath that you let out once you won and like it hit you, like it must have felt so validating for so <laughs> many different reasons. And yes. The emotion was really, really incredible to see, uh, especially since it's, it ended so late. You were still so emotional and so God, that's, into I'm actually, actually winning. Really, I'm really surprised that I like held it down for that long because um they were streaming pretty much every single set of the tournament. So even before top eight, um, like the difference between one player playing their next set uh, was taking a lot, you know? Uh, So there was definitely a moment where I eventually went out to grab a snack um, and then I uninstalled everything, basically uninstalled uh, mostly Twitter um, and Discord to just kind of like write some notes, you know, and stay like, Locked in, basically. That's why it took you a couple uh, hours to respond to me. Yes, God, yeah. basically, because um, <laughs> I'm definitely like I was listening to the podcast right now because uh, I knew I was going to join, and I heard um, Shadik mention the like, like having way too much information in your head definitely clouds it up a ton, you know, and you start getting nervous, you start overthinking interactions. Uh, so, like my sweet spot for playing well is when I'm not feeling basically any emotion at all during the sets. And I can just think a few things objectively, you know, that I have to take before the set, basically, you know, uh, and then just do what I know to do, you know. So I think a lot of people uh, who may not know you as well, um, if you don't mind, I want I want to ask if you can, like, take us through your process of how you prepare uh, in general, like how you prepared for this tournament, um, pre-local, the tournament itself or grands, like all your opponents, like what goes into your preparation process um well usually i always try to um balance uh i call it a triangle of improvement which is playing theory crafting and bot reviewing uh i tend to be the type of person that loves the theory part of the game a ton more in terms of um you know just taking notes and then bot reviewing i i don't really play the game that actively uh, or I should say, I didn't play the game that actively until like around like a month ago or so ish. Basically, after Comic Palooza happened, which we don't need to talk about. Um, but basically, I I knew that I need to be like very warmed up for tournaments going into them, you know, uh, to kind of just not doubt myself at all. 
and then other than that it's i think things that you can you know just intuitively think of like looking at the bracket looking at the possible opponents and just uh, making a list of like okay these matchups i'm really comfortable in these matchups i'm not comfortable at all in let me just pot all my money into preparation for these and uh you know that's basically how i structure it um one thing that um a lot of people ask me over the weekend is like how do you prepare for matchups that haven't happened at top level with Pikachu, you know? Because there's uh, so many, like, there's only so many bots of either me or Isam winning some matchups, you know? And um, there's still a ton of matchups that still haven't been won by Pikachu or just haven't been on stream at all. Uh, that's, that's one thing that I want to, like, tell people to do. You can probably just look up at, like, the worst loss of the player you want to beat, basically, or the character you want to beat. And just kind of like look what look at the winners' options basically. Just kind of like correlate that to like bad positions that they won neutral in. You know, uh, just try to find those winning spots for your own character. And if the character is flexible enough, then you should be able to make some magic happen. You know. Yeah, it's really, it's really interesting. Tell me what. So like in my head, I would think that Meister was your like biggest win there in terms of like mentally because game and watch. Yeah. Um, but I was curious if that was true or if you had a different set that you were like happier that you won. Like you obviously won the tournament beating Sonics. Um, but I didn't know if like you beating Meister was like, OK, no matter how well I do at this point, like I beat Meister offline at a major. Um, I think I was happier uh at beating meister at the pre-local because that was like the first time i was like okay i can do this offline and i can just time him out you know um on the other side i was pretty happy that i beat meister i guess the normal way without a timeout you know um but um i think sonics just adapted really really hard and had a ton of momentum in grand finals so it was definitely a ton more stressful than any other set i had played up until that point, especially because of the time, how tired it was, uh, Sonic's momentum. So I lost set one kind of convincingly. And then I was pretty proud of like how much I adapted on set two. Like I consciously told myself to change a few things and it worked out pretty well. Okay. Uh, what are some things that you feel like Sonic's was lacking when he was playing you? That Or like, were there holes in his gameplay that you were like, okay, he's not recognizing this that i'm doing or he's not used to dealing with like this pikachu option like were there certain things that you're picking apart and just kind of like abusing as time went on i think at this point there's basically no secrets between the two of us we just both know how pikachu and sonic work uh as you know we just play pretty much every single like every two weeks in coin box you know right. uh so very little uh secret information at all uh if anything i just think that he had me, for example, there were some times that he tracked me really well on stage uh, when I was like rolling or repositioning or drifting off stage, etc. But he didn't have the confidence to do it. I don't know if it was nerves. I don't know if he just chose to prioritize stage control. But uh, I definitely felt like I was getting away unpunished a few times, you know. Uh, like you kind of do that to people because you yeah. like because you are so often passive, but then of course you mix in like the kind of no of like, I mean this as a loving way, like a dumb offensive option. So people are like stunlocked. They're like, I are you going to do the stupid aggressive thing or the thing that you usually do? And it freezes people a lot. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I heard from. Um, uh, there was a top player that I played warming up. I forgot who it was. I think it was Ramen, actually, Mr. R. Uh, where he told me the same thing. I was just like retreating a ton and then eventually he's like, oh, you just turn on the offensive randomly once and it like super worked, you know? Because, uh, yeah, I'm going to be like dashbacking. I'm going to be repositioning like 10 times in a row, but then I will run up and grab you because I know you're going to be in the corner in a bad position. The risk reward is good. and Or I congestioned you, basically, right? Um, definitely doesn't always work, but I think that's been the little bit of aggressive spark that kind of tuned up a little bit of my gameplay, you know, where as in the past, I was just always defensive. And I'm pretty sure you remember that, Isam. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you still don't go for big offensive reads in terms of like advantage. Yeah. But you like definitely you definitely hold forward sometimes in neutral. Like when you have it, you have it like you got like a you got like you took two stocks from Meister in like 45 seconds, which was like what and that was game five of the set you played so 
you have yeah, it in he, you you just he, choose not he's to. also he's also going for thunders more often now a lot no, of times it, all combo thunder and hey then one other thunder i'm just saying i saw i saw him thunder and i was like ah eric can't get mad anymore he's doing it ever Wait, did you do it versus sonics because i haven't watched grand finals yet uh i think i got like two thunders but they were combo oh. thunders yeah hmm Drift so. Thunder's broke and yeah, yeah. I, I think to, to add on to what you were saying about Sonic's like getting nervous and stuff, I've talked to him after a couple of the times that he's gotten second in all these tournaments because he's the Mr. R of this game. Um and he tells me that it's uh definitely like he does get more anxiety and more nervous when it's grands because it's like the last thing he hasn't conquered, and he just like all of those like emotions and thoughts and like can but he's you actually do it? Okay, but not really. Which one did he win? Yes, really. He, he won. He won, he won, he he won, won Gommel last year and he won yeah, four majors last year. Which that was last year. That was last year. Was last year. Get over it. I don't know. I'm just saying. When I talk to him, that's what it. he says. That he's like the the hump is like consistently winning. I guess like he'll win every now and then, but like there's a bunch of times that he'll just get second, and he just like adds on this extra pressure to himself. So, like, I don't know. I try to tell him not to get into his head too much because when he's not in his head, he's ridiculous. Like, yeah. um, that's one thing I wanted to, like, super slightly touch upon. Uh, I'm, like, the same way. And honestly, I think it, it might be a personal thing. Like, obviously, you, don't, you never know, like, what's going on in other people's head, um, especially because, like, as competitors, we don't want to like show weakness to the other competitors, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but personally, I definitely am such an overthinker, and if I start overthinking, I crumble super duper bad. So um, I have no idea how I did it for that grand finals. And um, honestly, Sonic's at the start of the set, like set one, he just like was on everything. He just punished me for absolutely everything. One of the best advantage states I've ever had to deal with speaking as pikachu and um you know set two he just he didn't drop like huge things i think the biggest drop that i can think of was the last up throw backer that he dropped when i had a lead in game five yeah um but all the other drops were just like neutral spots where i think he could potentially maybe get like a whiff punish like a dash attack grab uh where he just didn't choose to and he just chose to like poke with jab and that got me like a reversal backer out of shield you know maybe he didn't think i was going to be ready for it uh but i definitely felt like i messed up positionally and he just didn't decide to punish me you know right. uh so definitely that mental part especially when you're up in the stage and you know the stakes are that high um such a hard thing to deal with honestly yeah also may i say you are a an absolute freak for going for that parry on that f smash <sighs> Like, uh, yeah, you know that he's psycho. Right? Yeah, um, the people I don't know. You get your Discord, uh, Tess, and they were like, "Yeah, he's dead." I'm like, "That's great." Yeah, I, I know I was dead. I don't know why I did that. Honestly, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, think I didn't even go parry. to up smash him. <laughs> but I, so the, I was gonna say I remember I saw the parry, and I was like, "Okay, but why did I feel like he was going to parry that though?" Something about the up smash, it just felt so like I feel like you were ready for that, and you were ready. Yeah, for that, and so you did. And I was just like, everybody was losing their mind. I was like, okay, like low key, like I, I understand, I understand, like I, I get it. One I of, um, I, I think one of the things that I do that a lot of people maybe don't think about is I segment matchups into like percents uh, and like positions, you know. And at that position, I was like, okay, the only thing that cheeses me right now is like spin fair with bat the eye uh, on the spin and forward smash, you know. Uh, so when I saw the forward smash, I was like. Oh, I don't know if I can curse, but you know what I mean? I was like, oh, you know, and um, we'll let it slide. Come on. What were you thinking? O-S-H, you know, <laughs> <laughs> let's keep it esports. Let's keep he it said, oh, looking for an org, looking for a sponsor. Hey, man. But like, uh, I also felt like the timing for like when I saw him charging the fourth match, I felt like it was a uh, predictable timing. I don't know. If, I'm sure you guys understand it, but like uh, yeah, for yeah. the viewers, you I hope maybe it. Exactly. You just felt like it was going to be the predictable, like, slight charge into release. So I was like, okay, let me parry, and then if not, I'm just going to jump back away or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And thank God it worked. <laughs> yeah, thank God. Like, imagine, yeah. like, oh, gosh. I, I wouldn't be here. I probably would be thinking about it. 
Mm-hmm. You'd be on that bed face down going, God, I can't yep. believe that hit. And sick. Yeah. But instead, you're just sick. Yeah, sick. So uh, for those who don't know, what do you what do you have coming up next for you? What's your next event? So I think the confirmed one is Warehouse Wars. Um, in two oh, you're weeks, going? I'm pretty sure. Yes. Oh, OK. See Are you there. going as well? Yeah. Yay, see you there. Um, and then for the rest of one, like I've been invited to a few. Uh, some I cannot mention, but basically it always Let's depends watch on the throne. Uh, no, we will see. We will see. That's but, the thing. Um, they haven't announced who they're invited yet. So uh, there, there's definitely more, but let's let's keep it low. <laughs> basically, um, it definitely depends on my school schedule because this is my last semester. And uh, they were always really nice to me, especially because one of my teachers used to compete in competitive cooking. So he, I guess, felt identified and he was like, okay, go to your attorney, represent the country, all that. Uh, I can like do something later, you know, like maybe let's, I'll do like a different exam for you. Uh, You know, just do your thing. Uh, But then eventually people started abusing that as well and uh, started missing classes and stuff. So he was a little bit stricter with me like last year. And then this year, especially with exams, he's like, okay, just like, please try not to miss the exams, you know? Uh, so I'm definitely doing that for sure. But is other than like good. Supernova, uh, that's w- w- one of the reasons why I'm stating this, because I am invited to Supernova, but I haven't confirmed because of that, basically. <laughs> I have to get the dates of the exams out of the way, basically. Right. Mm-hmm. Um... Oh my God. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, anybody else it? have any questions for Mr. Shiny Mark? So, do you think we beat Game & Watch now? I don't know. No, we don't <laughs> okay. beat Game & Watch. Absolutely hey, man, not. And you have some crazy opinions. I don't know. No, 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 no. Uh, I have, I have one, one question. Uh, I like watching player cams a lot, and I was watching <laughs> Grants. Um, that's not what I'm going to say. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> oh, I think I know why you laughed. <laughs> we can talk about um, it if you want. No, I mean, I mean, if you want. <laughs> but what I was gonna say is, like, I would see like bad things happen to you, and like you're just laughing about it, and like I feel like it looks really casual to you, and I feel like players don't react in that in that sense. And so I was just like wondering, like, what goes on in your head when like things aren't going like well um, in the match? You know what I mean? Like, I would see like you Sonic would do something good, like edge guarding, and you'd be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like, are you like aha? Um, so yeah, I was like yeah. wondering what you, like what you think about in sense. Uh, usually, like, if I laugh something off, it's because I knew there was, like, one possibility of something bad happening, you know? Uh, and it's either because I'm laughing at myself of, like, oh, I just gave it to them for free, okay, let's, let's move on. Mm-hmm. Or it's like, okay, you got it, that was, like, a really good play, let's move on, you know? I try mm-hmm. to not stay in, like, moments of, like, uh, being frustrated, basically, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, but other than that, I, again... As an overthinker, there's definitely going to be future tournaments where I'm laughing it off, but in reality, I'm really tilted. For this tourney, I, that was not the case. That was, it was just, I was super locked in. And everything that happened, I was just like, okay, let's just keep doing the game plan. Unfortunately, like, again, since I prepared for the matches, you know, I prepared for Gak, I prepared for Sonic, uh, I prepared for Meister. Um, you know, I had very segmented parts of the matchups down, you know, so I was like, if I'm getting punished for something, it's very obvious to me like what I have to do to change it up, you know? Um, so I was never really stressed. There was never a moment of like, I really don't know what to do. I don't know why they're outplaying me right now, you know? So mm-hmm. that's basically what it is. Yeah. And now uh, onto the other thing in Fire Cat National. <laughs> <laughs> is it the, um, the tick? <laughs> <laughs> the tick. I don't yeah, know how we what's, what's the other thing? I don't know what this is. <laughs> Dude, I, I want to I I wanna make a tweet and be like, if I want to just zoom into your face, and I was just gonna make a tweet and be like, if the gameplay isn't like this, I don't want it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nobody's matching my freaking cam. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I, I've just had a habit of like making faces when I'm playing. That's basically mm-hmm. what it is. I think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, kind I know of me and my brother do that as well. So that's. To me, I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. For some yeah, reason, that's yeah, just like yeah. the natural resting, but stressed and focused position. I've gotten memed on for from my community since like 2017 because of that. Because especially like move my tongue a lot when I'm like really concentrated. 
Uh, so I think that definitely mm. makes people laugh. Oh, you know. people have their own thing. Like, like, so is, is, is your tongue like the buzz's lips? Yes. Ma- yeah, I think so. <laughs> like, if I'm dash dancing, my tongue is dash dancing, dude. <laughs> <laughs> or like tweaks eyebrows and his like his face yeah. in general. Yeah, you just don't get to choose it. And then if you try to change it or like are aware of it, you're gonna start playing more. So that's so it's funny. just something that's there. <laughs> I gotta pay attention. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch the sets and pay attention to the player cam. Get a toy oh, that's that. very obvious. No. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's funny. But uh, no, yeah, I think Congrats, other buddy. people too will have like their mouth open or like I don't know. They've been doing anything. I'm just like, uh, yeah, people have their own thing. Um, I talk to myself as long as I play, so. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, yeah, and then something happens, and I'm just like, though that was so. <laughs> Honestly, I've what been... you do a lot. You go, that was so. <laughs> and then you like bounce a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been jealous, like consciously watching other top players that are like completely stoic, just like only facing the screen. And I'm like, God, I wish boring. I looked like that. Lamb. No, <laughs> those people are boring. They're so boring. <laughs> it's nice to have a little something different, you know? I guess okay. so. Loki, last question, because I know Tell we're me. running out of time. Well, no, I have one after, but go. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Were you relieved when Shattuck beat Spargo? Because I feel like Spargo and Grands would have been a lot scarier for you because Spargo bullies you a little bit. I was hoping you didn't ask that. But yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, no, basically, um, yeah, no, Spargo and I, obviously, like, I just admire his play a ton, but he... Like, people were asking me, like, okay, Mark, this is going to be your first super major win, right? I was like, unless I run into Spargo, because I'm not confident against Spargo yet. Like, I... He's too fast. Have, yeah, he's too fast. And I am aware of a few things that I am lazy in the matchup, especially. Because um, I'm definitely the type of person that likes to, like, solve matchups, if that makes sense, right? Like, in terms of, like, this position is good, this is my answer to this, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. With Spargo, it's just too dynamic, it's too fast, and um the positions you gotta be like super confident you gotta never second guess yourself you know uh so to answer the question um i obviously always want spargo to win but i was super relieved at shattuck beating him i popped off in the back myself and i was like okay i have a really good shot like you're you had for me right (laughs) yeah 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 one of my favorite players of all time no of course you're i actually admire your positioning i was telling a lot of top players like this guy's positioning is probably the best in the world, like yours. Oh, um, you. But in terms of matchups and just like, I guess that's why it's my possibilities. Uh, like, I would say like me versus Spargo is like, every five sets, I probably win one, probably. And then for all the other players, it's either like even-ish or my favorite, I'd say, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so my question was, there was like a micro interaction that I just had no idea that was happening. It was like, you would back air Sonic's shield, and yeah. he kept like short hop upbearing between it. Sonics was up, yes. oh, appearing out of shield, like in between the back air. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's one thing he loved. Um, he just started doing it one coin box randomly, and then I was like, well, guess there's no more rising aerial shield pressure. Is it because um, your back air is so high that like when he splits yeah. his legs, it's because of that like, oh, plus the hurt box shift on his legs. Yeah, and like and like his he just short like when people jump they go down a little bit like a lot of characters can like up smash through it and stuff yeah. which is why Mark typically goes for delayed auto cancel forward airs okay. for combo starters. Yeah, but like Sonic's short hop is also very tall, so it's just like surprising that he can like yeah jump straight it's into uh, it like, it's literally just a hurt box shift interaction that's very it consistent. So that's wrong, I was like, what yeah. is that? <laughs> and then I think yay. Uh, true they should have never buffed that move honestly do that? yeah but as as soon as i realized like he was doing that all the time against me in coin box i was like okay new rule new rule unlocked and i just never <laughs> hit a shield like that yeah. <laughs> my one like remembrance from that set was just like that you actually can't hit a shield and it, the gameplay was getting advanced loki y'all motivated me a little bit to lag a little more but like dude you did like Drop ledge, wall jump, cross up, Pikachu Nair, and he instantly, without questions asked, like you're in disadvantage, by the way, quote unquote, without questions asked, he footstool homing attacked you. I was like, all right, we can't play the game anymore. I was yeah, like, I was like, okay, we're layers in for sure. Oh my god, we can't do anything. Watching gameplay from 2024, if I looked at this, even in like 
2022, I feel like I would have been like, damn, this is crazy. Yeah. It definitely is. I hate Sonic. <laughs> I just want fine. Well, no, he's not fine, but not um, for my character. Slice yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I probably shouldn't talk. Yeah, <laughs> earlier when you said uh, the only two things to worry about were F Smash and Spin Dash Fair on Bad Di, I was like, <laughs> on Bad Di, that's cute. How what do you mean? Do you think Pika is sorry? Spin oh, Spin Dash Fair for against Snake just works all the time. Oh no, no, no! I mean, it always works on Pika as well. But I mean, like, if you have Bad Di, you're gonna end up way further into the like close to Blast Zone, basically. Whether it, where if you'd like di in like yeah. I guess you're gonna get hit. Or, gonna yeah, exactly, exactly. Like a lot I'm of people like instinctively yeah. di out, me included for a while. But then I just told myself just di in, dude. Like it's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Wait, what are you gonna ask, Shadik? Uh. How good do you think Pika is? Like actually. Um, I think he's probably top two. Uh, pretty solidly. Mm. Though, oh, well, I'm not gonna say solidly. I think peak. At you, <laughs> as in like peak, um, probably almost top one, but I think Steve's peak is like incredibly ridiculous. So I'll settle for top two, but I think consistently Pikachu is probably around top, probably top three, just below Sonic and like maybe a bit further down, but guaranteed top ten, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's just hard to reach that peak, and I feel like if you're you not like, yeah, honestly, uh, it was close. You I, I was Meister. Like, I so was talking you, you got it. about yeah. this with New Days before one of my sets. I was like, I'm not satisfied with how I'm playing. Because um, I, I think it was New Days and someone else asked me, like, why are you so mad at beating Sonic? Like, why aren't you, like, popping off or happy or anything? I was like, I definitely could have played better. Like, I definitely gave him a lot of, like, free mistakes or um, gave him a lot of openings, you know? And um, New Days was telling me, like, oh, you get it. Because when I say that, people get mad at me. Yeah, yeah, no, I asked, it was Beastly who asked you that. Because I didn't ask yeah, Because yeah, yeah. I understood already. I was like, yeah, yeah. Just... No, you get it. Yeah. No, that one time we called and you, like, showed me some Sonic stuff. And I've been studying. I've been beating them low-key. Yay. <laughs> Man, that character is insanely nasty. And I don't blame anyone for losing to him. But... I, I will say learning how to beat Sonic is one of the least intuitive things in the game, for sure. Mm. You want to fig- figure out how to do it with Snake and let me know. Oh, right, thanks, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta go. Thanks, bud. Yep. Appreciate it. Like running out of time. Dude, you have no idea how mad Sonics was yesterday, dude. I was, was at so the pre local or was, at the local? Yeah, it was so funny. He literally landed at like 5.30. Yeah. But our local starts at 6.15. He just went straight there? Yes. God. God. What a guy. He, he wasn't signed up. I was like, cool, tonight's going to be like all the other demons. And like uh, Cappy and Sonic are like, like they're coming back home. So not going to be there. And then like on my way there, someone was like, oh, by the way, Sonic's and Cappy are coming. And I was like. <sighs> and he was grinding Dude. today against Pikachu. Like he was playing Void Pikachu. Yeah. He was laughing on training mode against Pikachu. He did the tweet of like, yeah. Boys, Pikachu. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing him on Thursday. <laughs> well, okay. Tell me how it goes. I'm gonna, and I'm going to lose like I always do, but I'll win a couple games and I'll feel good about it. You're going to give him experience. I feel that so hard. You have to be. He plays you all the time. He has experience. Yeah. He knows he, all these things. It's just consistency. He knows everything of Pikachu, honestly. Yeah. Like, the way he dismantles me sometimes is gross. And then I'm like, okay, I guess I just can't do anything. And then I do better. And I'm like, God, okay. Yeah, if you're not fishing for the, for the Pika, like, matchup knowledge test, uh, you do better against him for sure. Well, just not even, it's just like, I can't even, like, aggress into scrambles because it's, like, not worth it. So I just quick attack away entirely and then T-jolt. And it's like, okay, that's the only thing I can do in the matchup because yep. he just deals 80 billion percent if you don't. Yeah. And then especially online, Sonic Spring is so annoying for combos because like, oh, you were slightly imperfect. Boom. Oh, tech chase, by the way. It's like, OK, I yep. guess. <laughs> well, I think as much as we would all love to continue chatting and talking about S-Factor and how good Shiny Mark is and Pikachu and Sonic and all the atrocities that are in Ultimate, uh, we are running out of time. So do you have any final words, Shiny Mark? Anything you want to let the people know? what you're planning on doing in the future. We already touched on like tournament schedule and things like that, but uh, like streams or any content that you're working on, um, any more goals that you have now that you finally got that first big major win under your belt. 
Uh, the floor is yours. Yeah. Um, well, first off, just want to thank everyone that supports me and just has always believed in me. Also, like to all the people that are hating, I, I really don't care. I, all I care about is just winning. Uh, so I will keep doing my you thing. You can tell. Yes, thank you. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, it's surprising to me. A lot of people still went up to me and were like, oh, you play so awesome. I'm so happy that you won. Uh, City, the or the um, the TO and his wife was telling me like, oh, we love your gameplay. Like, I know some people don't like it, but that was awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing my thing. Really appreciate all the fans, all the uh, support. Um, for extra words, you know, I'm probably I'm gonna figure out school soon. Like in terms of like the dates of the exams and stuff. And then once those are like settled, slash, I graduate. Uh, like at the end of this year, I'm gonna spam travel for sure. Like I definitely like my biggest goal in Smash is uh, I think as most of our goals are is just be the best player in the world eventually. Uh, so I won the super cool. major. Definitely something that's ticked off my list. But um, I haven't won a super major over Spargo, you know, which is my biggest demon. So I think then I would probably pop off way harder, and then hopefully sometime in the future, uh, go into bigger heights and be the best player in the world. You know. Um, other than that, uh, check out my Metapy. I'm always doing coaching. Probably not for a little bit. I'm a little bit sick, you know. But uh, I always love talking about the game and keep helping people out. And other than that, any orgs that are watching this, I am not sponsored. So it'd be up. Yeah. Good luck with that, man. We, I know we all really want you to get on a team so that we could just, you know, see you more often because outside of gameplay and like being a big fan of your gameplay, you as a person, you're great. You know, a lot of us have good memories with you, interactions with you. Uh, and I definitely want more people to be able to just like meet you, get to know you because uh, we've hung out a bit. And like I said, you're a great guy. So I look Thank forward you. to more, really, people, really more people getting to know you as a person. Thank you so dope. much. Of course, dude. And he called me a star backstage. He <laughs> was wearing glasses and a sweater as a like as a coat. It was crazy. We see we call that a diva. <laughs> yeah. Rockstar diva. Yeah, Mute Ace is our little diva. Um, but yeah, so thanks so much for taking some time out of your day. Feel better. Thanks for hopping on the podcast today. Uh that'll be it for us today, everybody. Uh sign up for Try that GG, subscribe to our YouTube, comment on our videos, tell us other things that you want to see us doing. Um, buy our merch, use Shaddix uh code because he did the best out of everybody. That's not shiny mark. Uh but yeah, enjoy your enjoy your day, guys. Uh see you next week on another episode. Uh yeah. Goodbye. Bye bye. Bye bye.